Evening, how are you doing? Welcome to Tekton Zoo episode 5. Today is going to be a big one. I have finished the entire entrance plaza, which I will show you in a minute. And then today we're going to build a whole new area for the zoo, the forest, and the first habitat. So first let's take a look at the finished entrance area. The sort of plain plaster wall that surrounded the whole area has been replaced with a much more attractive one. And thank you so much for all your uh, votes last week on the donation bins. The winner was the second design, uh, so I've changed all of the donation bins in the zoo to match that design. I've done a picnic area, because my guests were complaining about having nowhere to sit, because they're very lazy. And we had some baby penguins. So without further ado, let's move on and start building the forest. So let's discuss the plan for the zoo, which I've not really been into yet. Uh, so each part of the zoo is going to be a different area with a unique look. Uh, each area will be themed. I'm not going to theme by geography, which is uh, all the rage in zoo development at the moment, uh, just because I think it limits the number of all the different types of species that you can have. I think zoos sort of end up having a lot of the same species as each other because they've got to have an African exhibit and a South American exhibit, etc, etc. So I wanted to try it do things a little differently so I'm going to split each section of the zoo up into habitats so there's going to be a forest area which is what we're building today jungle mountain and aquatic and possibly some more just seen the news about the reduction of the polar bear habitat requirement uh, I've never used those before so I'm pretty tempted to put some of those in so I'll see if I can squeeze enough space in for them somewhere uh, so here I'm building an entrance for the forest area after the central plaza which we're in at the moment which is entirely uh, sort of modernist in design very man-made no attempt to be natural at all the other areas are going to be quite naturalistic in look and then with these sort of modernist structures looming out big white concrete structures as you can see here I've gone crazy and introduced a new color into the zoo <laughs> everything's been like white and orange so far um, so I wanted to put in a, uh, a third color for the green to signify that this was coming into a, a forest area here you can see me doing the pathing here which was an absolute nightmare I really struggled with it I, uh, I left a bit of it in so you can see all the uh, fun and games that I had even trying to get simple paths like this what I was doing is for the entrance I didn't want to use an 8 meter gridded path going into uh, the entrance or two 4 meter paths next to each other because the guests would walk straight through the, um, the join in the middle which I didn't want to see um, so trying to get two parallel paths to go next to each other through there was a real struggle uh, but I managed it in the end. The original plan for this was to have a waterfall at the entrance to the forest and then ring-tailed lemurs off to the left red pandas directly behind the waterfall and then binturongs on the right which I'm excited about because I've never used them before and they're one of my favorite animals um, but I built a lake to go in front of the lemur habitat and I liked it so much I thought I've got to put something in it so I put some flamingos in there and then hopefully we've still got enough space to squeeze the ring-tailed lemurs in to the right of the flamingo habitat. This waterfall is a sort of tecton style build based heavily on their, uh, their aesthetic. Uh, it's kind of weird looking. <laughs> I hope you guys like it. Uh, I quite like it. It was, it was kind of tough to build because I wanted to use the um, circular pieces here but obviously they only come in one size and, and three different heights um, so making sort of concentric circles and interlocking circles and things like that uh, can be tricky because everything's the same size there's a lot of sort of fudging of the um, angles to try and make it work and as we all know working with water in planet zoo is second only to working no in fact it's worse than working with paths um, so this took a long time to put together to try and get the water at a decent level and then try and hide all the waterfall pieces inside the concrete. 
So like I said, I want the forest to look really natural. Um, so putting in a little bit of terrain variation and then concentrating quite a lot on the planting. I went for a walk out in the Peak District, uh, which if you're not in the UK is a really nice part of England, lots of forests, etc. The other day, uh, I took some photos and sort of took note of where um, where the planting was in, in real life next to paths. So you sort of get um, small trees and the odd plant or flower next to the path. And then you get uh, sort of undergrowth after that. And then you get the bigger trees further back. So I've tried to replicate that in the planting here. I'm trying to work with water effects when it starts raining in the game. <laughs> it's really confusing. Um, I should have just left it, I don't know, I didn't come back to it when the sun came out. That's one of the pleasures of building in franchise mode though. You get weather, you get fussy animals, all sorts of uh, problems to overcome which is always fun. The main influence of this particular build is probably again the Penguin Pool at um, London Zoo, much like the Penguin Palace that we built. Um, although overall in this forest, what I'm sort of going for is I really like the way in um, Dudley Zoo that Turkton designed. Uh, you've got the grounds which are uh, they're not particularly naturalistic they do have grass in them and the structures sort of loom out of it uh, very effectively I'm a big fan of the new water coloring and clearness and um, transparency that you can change you can make some really good looking water features and things like that uh, with that new option that they've given us I mentioned before that I wanted all the builds to have um, the sort of white concrete with lush foliage over it. Uh, so I'm putting a little bit of that in here. Uh, but the actual shape of this build is really simple. I want the plants in front of it and trees, etc., to make it look like it's sort of looming out of the forest. So I'm just starting the terrain work here uh, and planting up the forest. Like I said, trying to make it look natural. It's not 100% finished yet, the whole forest, but I've concentrated mainly on the areas by the flamingo habitat that we're building today and the waterfall at the entrance. All the trees are um, temperate European, Asian or African trees, A, to keep the flamingos a bit, uh, vaguely happy, and B, so it looks like a forest, because <laughs> I'm going to have a jungle on the other side of the central plaza um, so I want them to look very different so I'll be using I'm using almost exclusively temperate plants on this build and I'll be using almost exclusively tropical plants on the jungle I always forget to introduce myself at the beginning of these videos so I'm ZSH plays thank you for watching if you are enjoying it and you haven't already please click the subscribe button and then you won't miss any in future and if you do like the video, please click the like button and it will really help this channel to grow. Thanks. So the wooden box that you can see behind the lake was the placeholder for where the lemur habitat was going to go. That's now going to be the flamingo shelter uh, and the lemurs will be moving to the right hand side. I came up with a logo for the zoo while I was doing this build, almost by accident. I was just mucking around with the letters and ended up with something I really liked. Uh, issue is though it's vertical which doesn't really work for any signs uh, so I've then modified it again um, as a horizontal logo which has been added to the sign at the front of the zoo uh, which you might have noticed in the intro and just putting a few more bushes and trees in and a little bit of terrain work uh, before I put in some flowers to finish it all off I put a few flowers in, not gone crazy with that, I tend to see that many flowers in temperate forests. And then onto the flamingo habitat itself, so I spent a lot of time on the shoreline around the lake trying to make that look natural. A lot of rock work and things like that. Like I say, I want a contrast between naturalistic setting and then modernist building designs so the actual flamingo shelter itself which we're building in a second um, is very sort of striking looking I hope watching this back I think there might be a bit much in the way of foliage in front of it so you can't really see it that well from where the guests are so I'm probably going to go back in and rearrange some of those 
so that you get clearer sight lines to the building. As always, I'd love to hear any suggestions uh, that any of you guys have for anything that I've built today. Uh, it's always good to hear what improvements could be made. Uh, if you can think of anything that would improve this, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that could improve this. Please let me know in the comments below uh, and I'll take a look and see if we can implement any of them into the zoo. I really like that big rock piece. Makes a nice little bridge. And the I think the keepers are happy to walk over it. The flamingos certainly are. So it keeps the feeder refilled. Uh, just doing some basic rotational symmetry on the habitat to get a nice shape. There's ramps going into it and then there's ramps on the inside going down to where another feeding pool is going to be. And then some big windows on the top so they get lots of light in there. The flamingos are really um, shy in this game, really don't like guests looking at them so they need a lot of shelter. And although there's windows all the way around the shelter, uh, I've positioned them high enough that I don't think the flamingos, <laughs> I hope, uh, that the flamingos aren't going to be able to see the guests when they're in here. I don't think they can, they've not been complaining as of yet, although there's not many people in the zoo at this point, which we've still only got, this is only the second habitat, so um, yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. Um, built the whole habitat out of null barriers, because we've got the railings on the path, which keep the animal in. Uh, obviously zoo flamingos will have their flight feathers clipped, so they won't be able to fly out anyway. And I thought I'd make a little custom keeper hut as well. Just a really small one that I can dot around the zoo near any of the habitats. As you know, I am the world's slowest builder, <laughs> so um, anything that can save time and allow me to use it more than once in the zoo is very welcome indeed. Doing a little trick here that I saw, I think I saw it in a Palsley video where um, if you want to put a, a bench down somewhere where there's no path, you literally just put a path down, drop the bench on it, and then delete the path. Obviously, the um, the guests can't sit on it, uh, but this is for the staff to chill out in. I put a little fly lamp in as well, keep the staff happy if they're out there reading in the evening, keeping an eye on the flamingos. Sounds like a pretty good job, I'd be happy with that. And that's the last thing we're building, uh, so please let me know in the comments what you think of it. I love getting your feedback. And uh, yeah, that is the build. Uh, stick around for the cinematics. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next week.